All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. I'm Christina here with NeuroTracker handling the um, neuromedical markets. We're very delighted today to have Dr. Maxime Chevrier, the owner of Synapse Plus, uh, join us, who is local here in Montreal. He has been a clinician for over 14 years and was an early adopter to NeuroTracker over nine years ago. Um, some of his expertise includes sports performance, mindfulness, chronic pain, and learning disabilities. And we're so happy to have him here and speak to us today on how um, telehealth has changed his practice over the past year with the pandemic and how he has been utilizing NeuroTracker in his practice. And he is um, gonna be sharing some case studies as well with us. So thank you so much, Maxim, for joining us today. Thank you, thank you, Krishna. It's my pleasure to be here today, especially the fact that I've been working with NeuroTracker for so long, almost 10 years now. And I have to admit the last year was uh, more rough basically than the others. And I had to uh, adapt and evolve a lot. And especially with COVID, and I really feel that NeuroTracker X arrived just at the right timing for me. And it made me realize one really important thing for me business-wise is that I realized I was using NeuroTracker, but not to the optimal way. And right now with NeuroTracker X, I discover a lot more potential for my business. And that's something I want to share with you, uh, you guys today. Um, and I'm going to, like Krishna said, I'm going to discuss also about two case study um, about that. And when we look at it, when we talk about telehealth, for me, it was a big game changer for me because before I was doing some with athletes were uh, away, but that was not part of my service. Now I'm using telehealth. Uh, first of all, with COVID, it's tough for many clients sometimes to come, but with the standalone system I used to have, it was hard because I could not offer that service. So right now, the fact that a lot of clients can do a uh, neural tracker from home, from work or at school, uh, change a lot of my business. So telehealth training now changed a lot of things for me. And that was a great opportunity for me to grow my business. So I'm really happy that, that I've been able to do that switch with my clients and the timing with COVID and Neural Tracker X just arrived the right moment, that's for sure. And even for retention of clients, it made a big change. Um, over the years, a lot of people were interested by doing Neural Tracker. They were coming to my clinics. Um, but sometimes when I was telling them they needed to do more than once a week uh, to get the benefits, sometimes people, they were, it was a bit far from them. Sometimes they didn't have the time uh, to come. So I lost a lot of clients because it was hard to retain them. But now they can come to an assessment with me. And after that, they can um, go back home, do their training and adapt their protocol. I can adapt their protocol from, from, uh, from home on my side. So that's great. And that helped me to retain a lot more clients than before. So uh, that's a big gain for me. And not only that, um, I used to have clients that were sometimes flying to come to see me to do assessment for concussion management and work with no tracker but same thing when i was telling them that one or two sessions won't give the benefits then they were stuck um, and i was not able to offer them the best service i wanted to do now with no tracker x i know i can give more and with schools with teams with organization i'm able to offer more um, which is great because a lot of kids can do it at the same time um, or even with um, uh, with school now that sometimes are limited with COVID, they can all do it in front of your laptop, which is which is great uh, for me. So that's a big change as well. But business-wise, this is where I saw the biggest change. Basically, I saw in a um, a change of 300% um, and more of engagement and. It's easy before, like I said, I was losing clients because they couldn't have come uh, twice a week or um, be, commitment, uh, be committed enough to come for many uh, sessions. Now, the fact that they can do it at home, uh, they can do it at any time of the day. Uh, the fact that I can ask them sometime to do it in the morning, sometime evening to compare the score, that's changed a lot of my business. And it's funny to say, but a friend of mine lately said, Maxim, with your clinics, uh, I guess with COVID might be hard. And yes, there's a few aspects that are a bit tough right now, but NeuroTracker X helped me to redevelop something else in my business. And actually I increased all of my clients doing NeuroTracker because they can do it, like I said, from home or anywhere else. So that changed a lot of things for me in my practice. So that's, that's great uh, on that point. And I often say that right now it's the gold standard service 
uh, Neural Tractor X. I've been using it for years, like I said, Neural Tractor. But when people were going back home, I was trying to find specific exercises that they could do at home, but I was never fully happy with what I was giving. And right now, I know that they can do Neural Tractor X from home, and it helped me a lot because I'm much more confident when I give protocol and I give exercises that they will improve faster and better. And for me, that's the most important thing. And it's, for me, a superior way to operate. Um, like I said, there's no limits basically to the number of clients that you can have. And my staff right now are helping me to look at the data to make sure they have the right protocols, but we can do that remotely. We can track sessions. I'm pretty sure that while we speak or while I speak right now, there's at least one person, I guess, that is doing a neural tracker session. I don't have to be there in the morning or at night or during the day. When I have free time, I'm looking at the protocols, looking, I'm making some message to my clients. And that's for me a good way basically to make sure they're committed, but at the same time, they have the best improvement they can have. So that's for me a big game changer, the fact that I can do it remotely and track their score that way. Um, it's way more than only a remote training because there's so many uh, ways right now, so many software, so many tools on the market right now that you can use to do cognitive training or remote training. But for me, you know, trackers somewhere else in the really specific zone, basically. And all the data, all the data basically that we can see, that we can analyze with Neural Tracker X, this is also really important. I used to take a lot of notes uh, and all my staff are trained to take notes, to look at specific things. But now, um, I don't know if a lot of you guys are using Neural Tracker X, but for example, the near miss at the highest speed, these things I was looking at before taking notes about that to adapt the specific protocols, now, no tracker does it for me, so I'm saving a lot of time. That's something great. I always say often that it's like the Swiss army knife. I'm saying that because no matter if you work with ADHD, with seniors, with athletes, uh, chronic pain, um, autism, basically, name it, no matter who's your clientele, the better you know neuro tracker, the better you understand it, while you can adapt your protocol and to make sure you have the right protocol for each and every clientele. And even in the same, for example, hockey team or soccer team, you can adapt each and every protocol for each position, each player for strength and weaknesses. So that's why I'm calling it the Swiss army knife because I'm saving times, but at the same time, I can adapt very, very best for each and every athletes. And we have to realize that it's also a, a time saver for me I'm saving a lot of time right now. All the data I was taking before, the information I was looking at, now I have more time when I'm in clinic with a client to look at, for example, nonverbal other aspect that before I needed to be more focused on neural tracker. And same thing from home right now, I can look at all of data and adapt more quickly all the protocols. So I, I believe athletes or clients are uh, improving better and faster right now. Um, here's I, I wanted to discuss with you guys two specific case study that are really important for me. Maxim, could you share with us um, why in particular you chose um, these two particular um, clients to to showcase today? For sure, and it thanks. It was it was tough for me to 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 decide which case study I would use because over the years I've been able, I've been lucky enough to work with a lot of different clientele, a lot of different people. And um, I saw so many good uh, um, history, basically, that it was hard for me. But these two case study, basically, these two clients meant also something emotionally, emotionally for me. But also, I felt they were basically on, on the two spectrum, to one with learning difficulties, one with as a, um, a professional athlete. So I wanted to be able to, to look at the two uh, spectrum, basically. So this is why I choose these two case study. Um, so the first case study is a young hockey player that came in my uh, clinic a few years ago. And the mom tried a lot of things with him. Um, he had ADHD, but he had other uh, learning disabilities. It was, it was really tough in class. Um, hockey wise was tough uh, with friends was tough. So socially, so they were trying a lot of things with the um, psychologists, with uh, um, sp special need care, with teachers, all that, private teachers, and they were not seeing a lot of benefits. And they came in my 
clinic and asked me if I could help, uh, for example, with NeuroTracker. And when I started to work with him, I could really tell that his focus was really, really low. It was really, really impulsive. Um, the self-confidence and self-esteem were really, really low as well. So I started with that. And the mom was telling me a lot, Maxim, I'm doing my best, but with all the costs that uh, psychologists, private teacher, other needs, it was a lot. So they were overwhelmed. So I structured a plan with them and I started basically really straight. It's okay, we're gonna start to do one core session, that's it. So the basic with NeuroTracker and even that, even if it lasts only five and six minutes, it was tough for him to sustain the entire session. So he was moving a lot, talking a lot, looking everywhere. He was often distracted. So I needed to uh, do a lot of pause, take time with him, work on breathing technique, um, just to make sure he was able to sustain the full session. So that was my main focus with him at the beginning. Then I, I tried slowly but surely to improve and to adapt the protocol. And what I like, it's for you guys who know a bit uh, um, scores with no tracker when he started, uh, his initial baseline was 0.34, which is really low. But like you can see, he improved a lot and his current baseline uh, after 25 sessions with 1.54. So when we look at the improvement, we talk about 347% of improvement, which is a lot. Obviously, if you're an elite athlete, you will never have that type of improvement. But at the same time, he started really, really low. It's not because cognitively he wasn't able to do it, but he didn't, he didn't have all the tools to do it. So only because he was that much impulsive or distracted, it was hard for him. So when we start working on some technique, um, we saw his um, score getting higher, but as soon as we saw a bit of consistency, the mom started to see also really good benefits in day-to-day -day life. And for me, that's the most important thing. I like seeing good scores, but at the same time, I like to see improvement in day-to-day -day life of my clients. Um, the results were really amazing. Um, it increases attention, increases uh, memory, decision-making. Yes, in class, uh, during exams, his marks went up uh, by many points, but also in hockey, so in sports, he saw a lot of benefits. Um, he was able to read much better the body language. That's important for athletes, but it's also important socially. So when you talk with people to understand the emotion, to read the body, it's also something really, really important. And something at that time I didn't expect was the boost in self-esteem. That's something when I started to work with NeuroTracker, I didn't think that much of that aspect, but I'm seeing a lot where you gain a lot of self-esteem and confidence when you're improving and you see that now you can do things that before was harder. Um, so that's something important. I remember two specific things about that, uh, that kid. I remember the, the mom was talking to me about a um, teacher and parents uh, meeting and the, the teacher asked the mom, uh, can you tell me what med is your son taking right now? Because I saw a huge change in class. And the mom laughed because, well, actually, he's, he's in that sp uh, specific situation, he stopped medication. And basically, the mom said, well, actually, he's working hard with no tracker. And we changed a few, few uh, habits. And uh, the teacher was astonished. Um, but what made me uh, really proud, and the mom was even prouder, is that the kid came back from school one day and she said, she looked, uh, he looked at the, at the mom, he says, well, mom, today I wasn't the last one chosen. So mom, I wasn't the last one chosen today. The mom was crying. Why? Because when they were playing games, he was always a, like, the last kid chosen by his friends. And the fact that he gained in confidence, the fact that it was better decision-making, all these small changes, well, kids saw that and it changed a lot. So that specific situation when the mom was crying, telling me that situation it was a really fun uh, uh, moment. So that's one of the reasons I chose that case study. The second case study I've chosen, it's a pro boxer, Francis Safranier. I've been really lucky to work with him almost since the beginning of his uh, career. He retired during COVID, but um, he's one of the best athletes I have the chance to work with. Great, great guy. And he was kind enough and open enough to work with me with NeuroTracker because if you come back almost 10 years ago, cognitive training, sport vision training was not a big trend. So friends was like, well, I'm gonna try that and I wanna work with you with uh, NeuroTracker, it was great. Mainly the biggest problem with him is, was his tunnel vision. So he was fighting, but he was not able to look, I would say outside the box. 
his he had a lack of anticipation and it was tough for him to see punches coming so that was two major things that he was seeing in his uh, uh, game. So I started to work with him, same thing, doing core lot with him at the beginning to just get the basis, basic. Then after that, I added other uh, tools. I worked with FitLight and Danavision as well. So I introduced that in my training with him. And then when it got better and better, I was able to do dual tasks with him. So for example, boxing drills with no tracker, FitLight with no tracker. So I was doing dual tasks and I started to see huge improvement, yes, in his scores, but also um, when he was fighting, when he was doing sparring, all these things make a lot of changes. And Maxim, um, normally we answer the questions at the end, but some a clinician just asked um, how many balls you started with um, with that athlete. So maybe since you're talking about that, if you can address that. Yeah, well, that's a really good question. And you see, especially for concussion management, you see I adapt over the years, but with that specific athletes, I started with four balls. And if we go back many years ago, well, almost 10 years ago, uh, the system I was using in that clinic or the gym I was working with was the standalone, um, the pro one. So with four balls all the time, so I was not able to adapt it. But for the first case study, uh, I started with three balls for that kid. So I don't have few, I have few, I have few uh, standalone systems. So it depends on what clinic, but I was using four balls with, with him. That's a really good question. But most of the time, I would say around 14 years old, I will start with four balls uh, because the, the, the distraction and the input that they have in their day-to-day -day life or as athletes uh, represent a lot, the four balls. So for me, it's important. But the, that's a good question, Christina. And you see, for example, with uh, as key athletes, sometimes I'm going to start with three balls because they have less distraction. So it depends on their, their uh, sports. I'm going to adapt at that point. If you have another question like that, don't, don't hesitate. Perfect. Or, yes, I just thanks. saw that one come up. That's good. So the results were amazing. And when I started to discuss with Francis, uh, I said, well, you'll see that it's going to be easier maybe for you offensively to see the, um, like the right moment to hit. And actually, his biggest gain was defensively. Um, he improved a lot defensively. It was great. And like you can see, he won uh, four belts. And he won uh, in Quebec the, the fight of the year also. So he was a really, really good boxer that uh, was dedicated for, to his sport. And he improved a lot. And I remember when he was telling me a lot, said, Maxim, I feel that my defense improved a lot and everything seems slower. So he was able to move better, to avoid it better. So he was seeing it coming. So defensively, he was much better. And when you're better defensively and you have more confidence, then offensively, you can attack more. So that made a huge change in his um, fighting. So that's something he was really proud of. So when we look at that, I wrote there a few um, groups basically I'm working with. So schools, clinics, gym, uh, on field with athletes, with corporate business, individual teams, groups, all these things I'm working with. And with a standalone system before I was limited in my service offer because they were not able to do it all at the same time. And now with no tracker x i see all the potential and when i was saying that my business grew uh, a lot in the past months with no tracker x well the fact that a lot of people can do it at the same time that changed a lot so no tracker x basically arrived just at the right time with covid but also the situation on that and it gave me uh, a different option for all these services so i'm really, really proud of that and i can really say that no tracker x changed the way i was doing business and of course for the best, so I'm really, really happy with all these changes I made with Neural Tracker X compared to the standalone system. Even though I had a lot of, um, uh, of um, I would say not options, but a lot of uh, experience with the standalone system, I was a bit limited, and I, I always felt that I was a bit limited with the technology, with what I was, I wanted to do business-wise. And now with Neural Tracker X, I can see all the potential. So for me, it looks really uh, optimistic for my for my business. Christina, I'll let you talk more if you want about that slide. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Maxim. Um, so for any clients that have not upgraded to the new NeuroTracker X platform, uh, we are offering an additional 10% off code uh, for this webinar. So you can just um, email me with the code MAXIM10. So we'll show uh, on the next slide here just our contact information before we answer some questions. Um, and something I'm very, very excited to announce today is uh, one of the questions we get so much on the sales side 
is, you know, what program, what protocol do I use for this patient, for that patient? And um, with Maxim's expertise, we've partnered with him where he will offer consultative services to our clinicians at a um, at $99 US for 90 minute sessions. So what that includes is he's gonna be able to help build training assessment protocols with the program builder with you, um, streamline the software and make it very simple for you to understand how to utilize the software for the different demographics that you use. So um, I highly recommend it if you're a clinician and looking at um, diversifying how even how you use NeuroTracker in your practice. Um, you know, some of our clients use it just for performance or for rehabilitation or just for concussion. So um, this opens the door to uh, offer the services for a, um, a whole modality of, of patients. So you can email professional services at neurotrackerx.com to uh, set up some time with Maxim. And Kristen, I was looking at some questions uh, while you were talking, and it was sure. some really, really good questions uh, at all. I don't know if you mind if I answer a few questions right Abs now. You want absolutely. Me to wait? So um, one question was if in my, if, for example, all the athletes or the clients I'm working with remotely, if I still see them in my office. So yes, I do. And most of the time I do an assessment at my clinic. And after that, I do like a protocol for them to work at home. And for me, it's important that they can do it at different time of the day, because I want them to see their trend, to see sometimes even uh, sleep habits, uh, food wise, all these things that you can see sometime. Um, and when you see that your attention change, sometimes you, you can adapt also your, your habits. But I often uh, suggest that they come in my clinic once every two weeks, sometimes once a month, but I, I continue to work with them because in clinic, there's still a few things I like to do that I can do uh, remotely for now. So that's something good. But with COVID, it's changed a lot. There's some clients I haven't seen in months because they're doing no tracker X at home. I do Zoom with them so I can look at their graph, discuss with them, do sports psychology as well. So that's something really useful. Um, there's a question also about um, neuropsychological testing, uh, that was, uh, if I'm doing that with my clients, I'm doing some, uh, one, sometimes I like to do someone that I, some tests I like to do, sorry, it's the IVA test. Um, it's the, uh, uh, visual and auditory attention test. Uh, I like to do it sometimes just to give other data also for the parents and to be able to compare. I'm using that. I'm using other tools too, but most of the time, um, I refer it to others, uh, let's say neuropsychologists, I'm gonna refocus on that and I focus more on, on the training, but I'm do some, uh, some tests that way. Um, there was a good question about concussion because like you all know, basically the purpose of boxing, it's concussion. We talk about uh, uh, knockouts. So um, I don't wanna talk about that specific boxer if he had or not concussion, uh, but of course a lot of boxers do have concussion and I use, I use NeuroTracker a lot in my concussion management program. Uh, basically, I use it for baseline testing uh, at the beginning of the season. But if you have a concussion, I'm going to use it. I use uh, the impact test. I use other uh, re reaction tests. I use a lot, of, of course, the SCAD, the VOMS. I use a lot of tests in my baseline testing. But NeuroTracker for me is always the test basically to pass. And I saw it over the years, even though you pass other tests, if you don't pass no tracker, you're not ready to come back to play. Um, so for me, it's important to do it. And for you guys who know a bit more no tracker, well, for example, the optic flow, uh, standing, stuff like that, I'm going to add to look if there's any uh, vestibular, vestibular issues. Uh, so I can look the vision, uh, cognitive, vestibular, all these integrated system together, how uh, they can work. So these are things I'm doing a lot uh, like that. And uh, Maxine, somebody's asking, can you talk about the best technique to improve score instructions or is it learning to track balls? So I think it's important to identify that NeuroTracker is a adaptive uh, program that adapts to the user. So yes, you are identifying targets in 3D. That is why you use the 3D anaglyphic glasses. That is how you perceive information in real life, but it actually adapts to the user. So when you get the score correct, it's going to speed up and it's naturally going to speed up and always challenge you. So I don't know if you want to add to that from a clinical perspective, but we do get that. That's a very common question that we get as well. How do we, how do we improve our score? 
Yeah, and for me, it's all uh, what I want to see as a clinician is your way as a client to adapt because for me, it talks a lot. So, can you adapt quickly? And for example, there's a dot in the middle of the screen when you're doing no tracker, but for many clients, they will never see it. So, they can do it two, three sessions, and then I'm going to ask them if they see the dot and say, so Well, what dot? So, when we're talking about peripheral vision, all these things. But here's the, the learning curve as well. So I may I expect that it will improve in the three, four, five session because there's a learning curve. But after that, uh, for me, it's a fine their way uh, of tracking balls. It looks uh, simple that way, but we're losing a lot of time by overanalyzing data. So we're moving a lot of, of our head when you're tracking balls. So our brain has to analyze the same data twice, uh, three, five times sometimes. So it takes a lot of energy to the brain. So I'm giving tips that we how to look. But of course, for an athlete, I'm going to be even more precise because that's their, uh, uh, their sports. But let's say if you have a concussion, for example, on the work a bit differently. Um, but what I realized over the years is that a lot of clients when they see they're starting to improve and they believe in it, then um, no matter what you do with them, I mean, if you do dual task, all these things, they be committed. And only let's say odd numbers. If I, sometimes I realize that if I ask a client, okay, start by the odd numbers first, when you tell me the balls, for example, then the fact they have to focus a bit more, sometimes it's gonna help them to be better. Others, they're gonna really crash. It's gonna be hard. Same thing when they're standing, some will be better. And most athletes actually will get better uh, pretty soon when they're standing. Others, it's tough. So it helps me also to understand uh, how distraction is playing a big role. And we have to be honest, most of us, when we're driving, if we have to park a separatal, we might lower a volume when we're driving. All these small things, we don't realize how much attention is important in our day-to-day -day life and that we underestimate basically its values. And if we're able to improve our attention span, then we see huge benefits in day-to-day -day life. And that's one of the reasons I, I like so much NeuroTracker. I didn't discuss that, but the, the neuroplasticity, basically the fact that it's in 3D, the fact that it works the entire brain at the same time, uh, that's for me the key where other software, uh, software on the market right now doesn't do uh, as much. So that's for me a fast track uh, on that side. Uh, somebody else was asking, is it, uh, if we never use NeuroTracker, is it easy to begin? Yes, absolutely. So basically it's a downloadable link um, that you can go online and um, you're, if you're working with a clinician, they would send you uh, a link and be able to monitor you. Um, but if you are using it just for personal use, you can just download the link. Um, we have a browser version as well and um, you identify the targets. You can start in 2D before you receive your 3D glasses and then switch over to the 3D setting. Well, yeah, and it's really, really easy. And you see, um, Often when my clients say, I try to explain as much as possible. And then so, well, Max, it's so easy to see they receive the link. The only thing sometimes I have some clients are telling me it goes in their junk mail. So you have to be aware with your clients. Maybe you, you can let them know sometimes it goes there if they don't receive the email, but they download it, they log in as simple as that. And me on my side, well, I can already adapt the protocol. I, I create a protocol for, for many athletes, sports and all that. And then I can uh, track the results and adapt the protocol remotely. So as soon as they're logged in, they're ready to go. So, so it's great. There's no uh, waste of time, basically. And that's the things I'm doing as well with some clients, but also other clinicians that sometimes are uh, uh, asking me to help them to build their, uh, their structure. So I'm doing these things as well. So if, if any one of you guys have any questions, I'll be more than happy to help. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Maxim, for taking the time today. Again, if you want to just uh, maybe scroll down a little bit so people can have, oh, I see it here. Yeah, your email, professional services at neurotrackerx.com if you have any uh, questions and want to reserve some time with Maxim. If you have any questions um, on my front, on the sales side, just feel free to reach out to me as well, cfefano at neurotrackerx.com. Um, again, it's such a pleasure to work with you and partner with you, Maxim. We're delighted to have you here in Montreal. Um, so thank you so much for your time today and thank you everybody. Stay tuned. We will be having another webinar in May on how to, uh, set up NeuroTracker in your office, uh, a walkthrough. It's going to be about a 15 minute walkthrough on using the, uh, how to best use the software. So we will be announcing that shortly. Thank you everybody and have a great day. Thank you.